and school stuff. So it's a great name. Thank you for being with us today. How many are grateful for the word of the Lord? I mean, this is the, the, the word of the Lord. Uh, that's what's going to make the difference. Uh, it, it, it's going to make all the difference in the world. Hallelujah. And so I'd like you to open your Bibles. We'll get right into it. James chapter 1, we're looking at the power of influence. Do you think influence is happening today among us? And uh, it is, and we're going to talk about it. So looking forward to next week, and we'll talk about it just after I conclude this morning. So we're in James chapter 1, and I'm reading from the Tree of Life version. And so follow with me if you have your Bible or your phone, or if you don't, just listen in. Uh, this is more important than what I'm going to say because it's His Word. Amen? It says this, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you enter various trials. Aren't you glad you came to hear that? Aren't you glad you came today? Say, Man, I'm so glad I went to uh, the celebration today because I just found out that I'm supposed to cut it all joy when I enter various trials. Boy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect work so that you may be perfect and complete. Lacking in nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all without hesitation and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, without doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And one of the challenges in the body of Messiah is double-mindedness. People who claim to have faith in Messiah yet allow the ways of the world to have a hold on them. Now, double-mindedness is best described in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. But I say, walk in the Ruach, that means spirit, walk in the spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desires against the Ruach, but the Ruach sets its desires against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you cannot do what you want. So the Ruach, the spirit, and the flesh are in opposition to one another. You, you have a war going on between the spirit and the flesh. Come on. And when we entertain the flesh over the spirit, here's what the result is. It's called compromise. God doesn't share His glory with people that compromise His word with fleshly desires. I want you to hear me. You know, I asked you a few weeks ago if you'd pray this way. Father, would you give Pastor Jack what we need to hear? And I said to you, I would pray, Father, give me what CCC needs to hear. How many remember that? I hope you're praying that. Because it's an awesome responsibility to stand up here and declare the word of the Lord. No one's trying to be hip here, be cool and con current and contemporary. We just want the word of God to be shared with us so that we would heed and follow the Lord. Our days are numbered. Our days are numbered. And so I, I want to encourage you to keep praying that way. Because the move of God and revival will not rest upon anyone who's double-minded. So please listen to what I have to say. Now in verse 6, what I just read, it says, A doubting, in the King James it uses the word wavering. Okay, So a doubting or wavering person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. That's what it says. Just kind of sharing what the Word says. Generally, people who question why God are those double-minded. Faith and doubt do not mix. Neither does blessing and cursing. Neither does sweet water and bitter water. 
Neither does truth and error. Neither does light and darkness. Neither does health and sickness. Neither does oil and water. When we mix two opposing ingredients, we get double-minded or unstable-minded results. Now, here's what the word double-minded in Greek comes from. It comes from two words, D-I-S meaning twice, and sushi meaning a soul. Literally, to be double-minded is to be double-souled. Or to have two divided opinions in your mind and spirit. I want you to know your adversary, that's his goal. That's his goal. Now, on a lighter side, so I met my wife when I was a freshman at college. She was from Oregon. I'm from North Dakota. I attended a college in North Dakota. But my roommate was from her home church. And so we went out to Oregon for our three-week interim time. And I met Lynette, but we didn't carry a conversation. You know, there's a lot of different youth, and my friend Dennis, and that's Lynette. You know, that. Three years later, she's at a college in Washington. I'm still in my college in North Dakota. I now have graduated, and I'm now in the aid of the president. I'm working for the school. So I'm doing public relations. I'm driving the van, the trailer on for our music team, and we're traveling, you know, three different uh, months. And we meet and we talk. Now, the influence of friends, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, my, my friend said, man, he's from Chicago, uh, if I were you, I'd write her. You know what I'm saying? Is anybody listening to me? Anyway, guys, you know what I'm talking about. And so uh, I wrote her, but I didn't hear back from her. So, uh, hey, listen, y y you don't always succeed at things you do. Amen? So uh, about six months later, now you have to understand, five months later, I started seeing a young lady that I was becoming very fond of. So we were seeing each other on weekends. And about six months later, I get a letter from Lynette. Yeah. Now, her reasoning, uh, it's true, but I mean, uh, is, is she was pre-engaged and was writing her boyfriend every day. What a, what a, what a wonderful lady. And, but I didn't know that. And uh, so she's going through her mail because they had broken up, you know, and that's, that, that's a heartbreaker, you know, really, it is. And so she's going through her letters and, oh, there's one. By me, that she never responded to, so you know, I got nothing else to do. No, she didn't say that. So, so she writes me a letter, and I wrote her twice. Now, I, this is on the light side of the scripture verse. You might say, oh, Jack, come on, get serious. I'm serious. So I wrote her twice, and I stopped writing. That scripture in James just popped out. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, you may say, you're, you're just getting a little overboard there, Jack. I'm just telling you how I felt then. You know, I'm starting to see somebody, I'm writing somebody. That, that's kind of going to be a double-minded person. Now, for th those of you that like that, I mean, <laughs> you like to have two or three on the street. That's not my strategy. I never was like that. You know, two or three girlfriends or you, a lady, have two or three boyfriends. I never was like that. But anyway, point being, <laughs> single-mindedness is the... Well, you'll have to talk to us after the service. I want to stay focused here today. Amen. Sing, yeah, you can talk to us after. Single-mindedness is the call by God to his followers. Double-mindedness comes from, and I'm going to give a few things here today. The first thing is the influence of culture. Now, I'm going to read to us. You can see the influence of what culture has or Today, the, the, the buzzword is cancel culture, but the influence of culture, you can read it. If you read the book of Acts, you'll see different passages, how the culture, the community got in there and started bringing division. And so here's one example, just so you can support it with Scripture. It says in Acts chapter 13, verse 49, now the word of the Lord spread throughout the whole region. But the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and they drove them out of their district. But Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off their feet against them, and they went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Ruach HaKodesh with the Spirit of God. Now, when you, I'm not done, but do you notice when you read the Scripture, and when people are challenged for their faith or maybe persecuted or suffer, 
the scripture tacks on the word joy. Listen, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Whatever the enemy puts in your face, hey, listen, you've got a great God on your side. And he, he is, he's overcome everything, and he's living in you, and you've been empowered by his spirit. My goodness sakes. He says, joy. Then it goes on. Now in Iconium, the same thing happened. They entered, as usual, into the Jewish synagogue, spoke in such a way that a large number of Jewish and Greek people believed. But the Jewish people who would not believe stirred up the Gentiles and poisoned their minds against the brothers. Let me just say, there is a poisoning going on in the earth today. We are being poisoned, and I want you to know this, and those of you listening today, that there is a minority group trying to keep pastors' mouths shut. I could say apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, uh, and pastors. Why? There, there's nothing really special about it other than pastors that at least are born again, walking in alignment to his will. They're preaching what this Bible says. Can I tell you what that adds up to? That adds up to hate speakers. That we are speaking hate to the world when really what we're doing is we're just bringing to light what God said. This is what God said. But see, if you don't believe there is a God, if you don't believe this Bible is the Word of God, then I can understand where people's thoughts are. Can you, you know what I'm saying? But when you know the Lord and realize we have been born, we have been created in the image and likeness of God. We're just not something that happened over uh, millions and billions of years. No, no, no. God created us. And He loves us and He's given us a plan. He's given us a road map for this life. One of these days, this, this life's going to be over. This is not the end. We're just pilgrims and strangers. We're passing through. And one day, soon and very soon, we're going to see the king. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. One messianic leader said, within a few years, and I don't know how he bases all that, but you know what? He's coming. And I'm not going to anchor on, well, i got four or five years, so I think I'll get my house in order. Get your house in order today. Don't be waiting. Don't postpone what you want to do for the kingdom. Do it now. And I know he's speaking to all of us. Get our life right. Get in alignment with His will. Don't postpone uh, re giving your life to the Lord. If you're at a place right now where you're just kind of double-minded, this is a day for breakthrough. Come on, somebody. But the poisoning of the mind, and that's what's happening. And you can read on. And so they stayed there a considerable time, speaking boldly in the Lord, who is testifying to the message of His grace, granting signs and wonders to come about in their hands. But the population of the city split. Some were with the Jewish leaders and some were with the apostles. Now it happened that an attempt was made by both Gentiles and Jewish people along with their rulers to abuse and stone them. Well, anyway, it goes on. I'm just saying that culture, influence of culture will make a difference. And so I just kind of want to get a little specific if I can do that today. Just for a few minutes, I surely want to talk. I want to talk about arts and entertainment for just a minute. It's extremely important that we are selective in what we set our eyes upon. I'm not talking to kids. Or I'm talking to mature believers in Yeshua. And I've talked to people, hey, listen, that kind of stuff, that, that doesn't affect me. Yeah, I do. Instead of seeing how close I can be to the world, see, that's, that, that's kind of the, the, the mentality of some, you know. No, how about how far away can I get away from that? Now, I'm not talking about being so heavenly minded you're no earthly good. I'm not talking about that. I want to be so heavenly minded that I am earthly good. <laughs> that I'm doing some good for the kingdom. My mind is set on things above. But let's look at this. Here's what it says in the scripture. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. So the word worthless is wicked, good for nothing, unprofitable, that leads to ruin and destruction. Now listen. I'm not here to give a, all the list of things that 
our society has. And you, you know. You know. Any of us in this room could be caught up in something that we allow our eyes to see that we have no business letting them see. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm talking to myself. You get to listen. Do you know what I'm saying? It is true. Generally, influence is subtle. One meaning of subtle is making use of clever and indirect methods to achieve something. Yeah. Now, Prophecy Newswatch posted the Grammys. We're talking about this year. The Grammys remind parents to monitor which artists their children listen to. The National Center on Sexual Exploitation released a statement condemning the performance this year. Here's a quote. In a performance that could have been cut from a hardcore pornography film, CBS allowed a glamorization of stripping and prostitution to be broadcast in front of a national audience, a portion of which were children, for no other reason than TV ratings. Stated Senior Vice President and Executive Director Don Hawkins. Quote, Despite the popularity of the song performed by Cardi B and Megan the Stallion, CBS should have never allowed this kind of explicit performance to happen at the Grammys. See, th these are things that are just wanting to desensitize us. Listen, I'm here to break that off of me and everyone in this room. Here's another verse of Scripture that's worth looking at. Let's say it together. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. How, or let me put this here, what does Hollywood want to achieve? Let me just give a couple thoughts. You have thoughts too, I'm sure. How about this? An acceptance of free expression with no accountability. How about to remove moral boundaries? How about accept all ways of living? I have some fantastic news for you. You have a choice. You have a choice. Someone had mentioned to Lynette about this movie. So we went to it. This is some time ago. And the language was so awful. I said, honey, I, I just can't stay here any longer. Well, you're just such a spiritual man. Listen, I'm going to tell you what I am. I was grieved in my spirit. I don't want to get to that place. If, if I ever get to that place, I hope God will humble me so much. I don't want to get to the place that I'm comfortable with everything that goes on. Ah, that doesn't bother you. You can put on that kind of stuff. That doesn't bother me. Listen, I want to be away from that. I want to be holy and separate from the world. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to exit the world. No, we're in this world. We're not of it. We're in it. We are the light and the salt. We must be in this world. We're the communicators of the hope and the light of the gospel. We have to be in this world. But we have a choice. Brothers and sisters, saints of God, you have a choice. What you allow in the gates of your eyes, you have a choice. It's best to find out what you're watching beforehand. And we didn't. And we sure got surprised when we were there. Let's look at the next one, education, for a moment. Foundational history is being removed or left out. True history is being replaced. Our children, our grandchildren should have the right to learn about our founding fathers, former presidents, and their faith in the Almighty. Now, this is a great Bible, a gift given to us. Thank you, Lord. The American Patriots Bible, and I'm going through it as we speak. So I came to 1 Samuel. I'm going to start at the beginning, now I'm at 1 Samuel. And inserted throughout this Bible are presidents, presidents' wives, people that have written songs, just, just people in legislation writing testimonial things. So let me just read just a snippet here. As you look at the introduction of 1 Samuel, I'll get halfway down the page. 1 Samuel offers us a contrast between two very important national leaders. Saul, who relied on his own abilities and reason to make crucial decisions about God's people. And David, who chose a path of humility and faith in God. As long as King David chose righteousness, God's blessing followed the nation of Judah. 
Similarly, as America entered the dark ages of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln realized the need for the nation to turn its heart to God. After the Union Army's defeat at the Battle of Bull Run, President Lincoln called the American people to a time of repentance, prayer, and fasting. So that, quote, the united prayer of the nation may ascend to the throne of grace and bring down plentiful blessings upon our country. God's heart is turned to such humility. Man, when I read that Bible and I read of all the leaders and people in the past and their heart for the Almighty, their heart for prayer, I'm just saying, see, what this nation is doing, it's, it's, it's keeping us from the most powerful thing we could be doing. You get a nation that agrees and prays and repents and fasts and all that kind of thing. I mean, this nation would be such a powerhouse that it would just be unstoppable. Not that we're in for the power. I'm talking about mighty in God. There's no such thing as separation of church and state. I mean, we've made it some, but there really wasn't that. Get this, the persuasion of multiple identities is being taught to our young minds. I was talking with someone about her granddaughters and the identities now that they're trying to sort out in their mind who they are. We have another gentleman that we know, his granddaughter, said, if you don't call me, Grandpa, this name, then as far as I'm concerned, you're dead to me. I'm talking about true stuff. I, I, I've ministered to these people. I know who I'm talking about. And so we have, a, we have this circulating in our schools, and the Bible is very clear about creation, male, female. There's help for people that might be confused. Thanks be to God. How many know our God will make it clear? He has the power to do that. Let me move on. Overexposure to sexual content. Schools are favoring the student over the parent. The teacher ought to be asking the parent if it's okay for their student to hear any lecture on sexual content. The parent ought to have the final word regarding such teaching. Call me old-fashioned if you want. I'm just telling you this is what ought to happen. I'm not running for office, but not, not a bad idea. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Well, you know, every one of these is a, is a message in itself. I just want to get through this. just want to give you some highlights. Government. Some legislation is dissolving our moral fabric. Some legislation is allowing the murder of living human beings breathing inside their mother's womb. Secularism is taking over the, to bury the heart and soul of our nation. Can I just say, let's be visible. Carl, I want you to come now. L let's just be visible. Let's do what we can do. Let's do what we can do. Carla uh, emailed me, and uh, I, w I wasn't sure if I was going to do it at the end, but we'll just do it right now. Well, this past week, something came to my attention that uh, really shocked me. It is uh, an initiative, a ballot initiative. That means some people are trying to put this initiative, uh, the when you go to the grocery store and people are having you sign to put something on the ballot. And this is for the protection, uh, to protect animals from unnecessary suffering and exploitation. So I grew up on a farm and I still raise my own beef, although we don't have a farm. My, I have my oldest son is in that industry as well. This initiative would absolutely destroy this. This agriculture is the second largest economy force here in Colorado after oil and gas. It would destroy it. Uh, if this were to pass, if this were to get on the ballot and pass, your meat prices for everything, not just beef, but chicken, seafood, lamb, everything, would more than double. We wouldn't be able to afford it here in this state. So your meat would have to probably be imported. What's that going to do to our growers here in this state? It's going to destroy them. So as I thought about this, I thought, well, gosh, you know, we've got, we've got to start being active in our government. There was so much time, so much debate and prayer that went into setting up the government for our country as well as for our state. 
And we, as the citizens, are supposed to be telling our elected officials what to do and how to vote. But we have given that up. We have become so busy and entertained that we no longer care what they're doing. We don't understand it anymore. And we think, my responsibility is to vote. I'll vote, and then whatever happens after. That's, that's where it begins, and that's where, it's where it ends. And that's wrong. We have got to take that back. We have to know what there's so much going on. So after I found this out, I went, did a little research, went online to our state government website, and I was shocked at everything that they are trying to put through. We hear little blips of it here and there. It's the same with the federal, it's the same with the state. We have no clue what they are doing because we have disengaged, and that's got to change. Um, over the years, I've thought, I need to be involved. How do I get involved? Well, it's so hard. I don't know who to call. I don't even know who my representative is. So I took the initiative to create a sheet for us. And one side is our Congress, our federal Congress, and it lists for, I think, for most people represented it here in our church. Uh, I've listed our representatives and our senators. You've got their email, their name, their district, their email address, and their phone number. And I'll tell you what, HR1, call the senators. And I know that senators may not agree with our position, call them anyway, I don't care. And then ca call them every day until they vote. It, the number's on here, you know what, it's super easy. You know why? Because of the state of affairs of our country, nobody is answering their phones. So all you have to do is call the number and leave a message. <laughs> It'll take you 15 to 30 seconds. And what I did, I called all of them, even the ones that were not in my district. Before this, after this passed the House, I called them all and I told them, I either appreciate your vote or I do not approve of your vote. And I told them what I thought. Uh, I didn't get a single person. Sometimes they have people answering their phones. It, it's, not, it's never the representative, it's never the senator. Uh, and you can leave a message with them and they will pass on the information. So it's super easy. It probably took me 10 minutes to call all of them. On the back side is our state legislature. It's the website where all the bills, all the initiatives, all the legislation they're trying to uh, pass, it, it's, that's on their website. And so I've listed our state representatives and our state senators. W it doesn't take long to pull this up. The website's here for you. Pull it up and see what they're doing. Call them. Say, I don't, I don't like this. This is not good for our state. This is not good for my family. And uh, so these are out right around the corner. They're on a table. Take the, the, if nothing else, pray for them. Pray for them to make the right decisions about what they're doing in our state and for our economy and for our families. Thank you. Timing couldn't be better, huh? We got three things we're talking about. We can pray and we can vote, but we also can uh, communicate. So thank you, Carla, for taking the time. They're right around the corner, and you can, you can get those. Praise the Lord. I'm going to move on real briefly here. Media. Now, we know the main networks are controlled, and they desensitize the listener over a period of time. But aren't you thankful today that God is raising up new networks? Huh? Come on. And music. Just, just a thought about music. Parents would do well to monitor what their children are listening to. The music we listen to often becomes the soundtrack to our soul and reflects the stories of our lives. Now here is a suggested guide. Discover who the men and women are behind the music. And what sort of music is coming forth? And lastly, what is the message in the music? The influence of culture will try to pose every ounce of faith you have. It doesn't support you to be all God wants you to be. Double-mindedness comes also, secondly, from the influence of family and friends. 1 Corinthians 15.33 declares, Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now for anyone in this room here, raised in an ungodly home, your standard of living most likely oppose the ways of God. 
If your family did not attend church, you were spiritually deprived from the ways of God. What was modeled before you became your standard for living. If your friends were ungodly, you thought it normal to think and behave the way they did. You know, friends can have a hold on you. Some get their support of self-esteem from their friends. And what they say about you means the world to you. Generational sins from parents are passed down until they are broken off in Yeshua's name. Family influence is strong. Some families have beliefs that oppose the Word of God. If you turn from their ways, it could cost you initially your relationship with them. Some will disown you. Some will refuse you. Some will persecute you. Now, every Friday, I do my best to forward an article by Voice of the Martyrs. It's called, I Commit to Pray. Here's the first one. They usually give three prayer requests. This one, I'm just going to read a couple lines. Family barred from two villages for Christian faith. Shortly after Gate, that's the name of the, the husband, shortly after Gate and his wife became Christians, his parents and the leader of their village forced the couple and their young children out of the village because of their faith. I could read the whole article. This is happening. This is happening all over. Family ties can be extremely hard to break away from. And we know what the Scripture says, that for some, it's going to require leaving husband, wife, father, mother, to really follow the Lord. We don't wish that on anybody, but it, there's some that could come up here and testify. When they gave their life to the Lord, they were disowned by their family. They were removed from their family. As far as the family cons was concerned, you're no longer alive. There's a lot of stuff like that going on. The influence. When we allow family and friends to influence over our allegiance to the Messiah, we will be double-minded in many ways. Here, let me, let me bring us here now. Here are some ways to be single-minded in a world of double-mindedness towards the things of God. Number one, look at this. Resolve in your mind. You know what that word resolve means? It means to decide firmly. So decide firmly in your mind and heart. Anything that compromises with God's word will not be allowed in your life. I know that's easier said than done, don't, isn't it? But we're talking about giving some tools today that you and I can remain single-minded. Now, this verse of Scripture is amazing. Psalm 119, verse 1 and 3. Joyful are the people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. Joyful are those who obey His laws and search for Him with all their heart. They do not compromise with evil and they walk only in his paths. I mean, it is extremely vital God's people come to resolve in matters that pertain to life and godliness. Too many are unstable in their walk with the Lord, and it's due to being double-minded. The sooner, the sooner that we submit wholeheartedly to God's word, the sooner we will experience single-mindedness that really is the mind of the Spirit. Secondly, die to self, die to your will, and desire to no longer be conformed to the thinking and ways of this world. I urge you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Now, it's hard to die to self, isn't it? It's not always easy. Put aside your will for His. Yeshua modeled what it means to die to self, and Bill referred to it. Father, if you are willing... 
take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. In other words, to die to self is to put the Father's will for us ahead in place of what our will desires. To die to self is to put the Father's will in front of mine. This mindset positions us to choose no longer to be conformed to this world. We choose to be conformed to the thinking of the kingdom. Lastly, every thought against the word of God, bring it captive to the obedience of Messiah. You know, we have the, we have the strength to do that. We have the strength to line up every thought the script with scriptures. Whatever is opposing the word needs to be removed from my thoughts and replaced by his thoughts. How does that happen? It says this, we destroy arguments and every lofty, in other words, every exalted opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, to obey Messiah. Yeah. See, we have a choice. We can do that. We can do that. It's time we stop compromise thinking and think the way of the word. Single-mindedness is stability. It's the way of the spirit. Double-minded. Whoops. We did not do that yet. Double-minded equals unstable-minded. How many know that the Lord doesn't want his children to be unstable in their thinking. He doesn't want us to be unsure of ourselves. He wants his children to be single-minded, stable, to make kingdom decisions. So there is a battle for our mind. The enemy and his agents oppose and oppress the mind. As a man thinketh, so is he. If we begin to get stinking thinking going on, I'm telling you what, we will compromise our thoughts and it will lead us off the path that God has for us. Our adversary wants to prefer our minds and get them off the word of God. Why do you think the minority groups are wanting to shut up pastors' mouths? Because they're declaring the word of the Lord. This word will change your life if you let it. Some of you have testimonies. I'll never forget. It was, I think, 2006 or 5. I can't remember exactly the year. I set up a, a, a motorcycle ride through the Na Rocky Mountain National Park with the Assemblies of God. They had a national conference down here at the Pepsi Center. And I'll never forget. We got it set up, and we're going. And so now we're at one stop just, just having some you know, coffee or whatever. And this guy's from Nebraska because this was kind of a national uh, motorcycle ride. And I'm getting to know this guy, and he told me in his testimony. He was ready to end his life. His marriage went down. Things were going down, and he was going down. And he thought the only way out is to commit suicide. And so he's in his hotel room going to plan to do that. Listen, God can just take that Gideon Bible, and even though it's in the drawer, he can kind of do something with that Bible. And this guy just said, you know, I'm just going to give God a chance. He opens the Bible. You know, God can just put you right when you, you know, how he is. Okay, Lord, whatever you want me to do today, I'll do it. You know, well, God can do that. He can do that. This guy said, I read the Bible. And that word of God just cut out his stinking thinking and got him to get on his face before God. And he receives the Lord. And ever since, he's been following the Lord. Listen, there's power in this word. And this society does not want this word to be declared. Now, you would think that would be a good thing. You would think our nation would be excited, just like in the Bible days. They walked, and that guy that was lame at the temple, Peter and John, he gets healed. You would think the whole community would be excited. They would say, way to go. But that religious spirit was raised up. Don't be healing on the Sabbath day. Listen, the compassion of the Lord will overrule ceremonial things. And he wanted that person to be healed. Yeah, keep 
the Spirit of the Lord is moving among us to convey today, this is the day to decide to forego compromise and double-mindedness and decide to abide in the Lord and let his word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Come on now. I'm about ready to be done here. I'm going to put this up. Today is a day to choose. I will be single-minded, and the Word of God will be my guide, and no more compromise with the ways of the world, but total reliance on the ways of my Father in heaven. I want you to stand with me.